What is going on, everybody? This week on episode 23, I'm joined by my brother. Let it be known that sometimes I will record this little bit of an intro, and it will be almost done, and I will say something stupid at the very end. Something stupid that I cannot cut out or edit or change, and then I have to erase the whole thing and record this all over again. So here we are, round fucking three. This week, uh, Adam was here for uh, some birthday parties, so I just grabbed him by the belt loops and drug him down into the basement so we could record a little bit of a podcast here um everybody's the day is long and the kids are tired so we're gonna make this a shorty we kept it at about an hour but i thought it was important for people to kind of hear from uncle adam since he's a big part of um you know the the product here the the instagram presence and the the stuff kind of that we put out It's, it's really me and adam uh, a lot of the time, but he sort of has been MIA and he gets a little bit of a chance to talk about that and um, what he's got going on with work and business and, and what the future holds for him and his company and, and how he's going to work around that or work that into his hunting se- season and, and some sacrifices that he may have to make and how he plans to do so. But remains to be seen, should be fun, should be enjoyable anyway. Uh, we hope you enjoy listening. Thanks for stopping by. See ya. This episode is brought to you by Beefcakes. Beefcakes is not your traditional gym. If you want to lay down between bench presses, go ahead. You want to pee outside? That's fine. Just be mindful of my neighbors. Do you want to not clean up your dumbbells when you're done with them? Go right ahead. Just be prepared for some ridicule. Do you want a chocolate fountain? Do you want a nacho bar? Perhaps you'd like to sit down on one of our fine leather couches and play NHL 22 on the Xbox. Cool. That's great. If you're tired of a traditional big box gym and you still want to get that pump but maybe have a snack, Beefcakes is the gym for you. Come see us today at Beefcakes. Face. Oh. Man, as a hockey guy, like I grew up playing hockey my whole entire life, the, the idea, the symbolism behind a face-off, the, the mano e mano, the, the culmination of all your hard work and the intensity uh, when it matters most, you know, truly symbolizes the pursuit of wild game, whether it's deer or turkey or elk or whatever. You know, you have practiced uh, your whole season or your whole off season for that single defining moment, whether it's on the ice or whether it, whether it's against you know your formidable opponent, that that mature white-tailed deer or that wily can't seem to figure out turkey. <laughs> I struggle with turkeys, if you can't tell by my uh, nervous giggling. You know, face-off e-bikes, formerly known as stealth hunting e-bikes. Same great bikes, just a brand new name. A little rebranding had to occur to sort of identify ourselves themselves, um, you know, clearly and uh, uh, on the internet. But uh, it's the same, it's the same great brand. It's the same innovation. It's the same everything that you had at Stealth Hunting E-Bikes, just with a new name. Uh, These these bikes are built and shipped from Michigan, uh, so that is near and dear to my heart. You know, uh, by actually tearing apart and assembling these bikes, you know, he's got these this access to you know replacing parts and 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 creating the perfect. Uh, mobile to climb these hills and you know I am not a slender fellow Um, I do like my sugars and I like my uh, fried foods but I'm moderately healthy I'm uh, I'm six foot and I'm over 200 pounds and I have been putting my bow hunter to the test here in Michigan um, because I knew that this 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 bike could help me in those scenarios where I needed to climb a hill, um, whether it be a chisel plowed cornfield or just some terrain here on my private properties in Michigan, I knew that it could get me from point A to point B and I have been testing it and it absolutely gets me where I need to be quickly and quietly. It was incredibly easy to get this bike to my house and do the final assembly in my garage. You know, the, the entire lineup honestly is, is geared to climb these hills. 
um, custom configured drivetrains and custom fabricated parts. These bikes are suited for the steepest terrain. Now I haven't gone, I haven't done anything crazy like test them out at attack or any ski hills, but I've seen Dieter do it. Um, smallest front chain rings in the interest, industry, offering the same motors and batteries as the biggest names in the industry, but at a fraction of the cost. Um, so listen, if you want to make every hunt count, make sure you're using face-off hunting e-bikes. Welcome everybody to another episode of Angel Road Outdoors, the podcast. This is episode 23 and I am finally, finally joined by my brother, Uncle Adam, here in the studio. Graced. Welcome back. It's good to be back. Good to be alive. It's, it's good to be alive. It's good to have you alive mm -hmm. here for my birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to Uncle Brett and St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody mm -hmm. out there that's Irish or has red hair. Even if you have red hair, I don't care if you're Irish. Are you gonna about, about to rap? We about to stout ass. <laughs> Anybody that's drinking beer, I saw some tracks on the side of the road in the grass. It looks, I was thinking, you know, people are drunk driving today. Oh, you mean there's a lot of drunk drivers? That, like, oh, man, that, that was a tracks? drunk person that definitely turned too early mm -hmm. and just kind of went up in the grass, made the turn anyways. I mean, I can't say I've never been to that point. Sure. I shouldn't have done it, but I did it. There's a lot of people that drink and drive. A oh. lot. But I didn't even think it's. I'm like, oh, it's Sunday. I've been working. I work today, and then I'm gonna go over to my brother's house, and then we're driving. And Kelly's like, "Just be careful," you know. And I'm like, "What do you mean?" And I'm like, "Oh God, there are people drinking out all day today. People sp woke up this morning sp early, specifically to go to a bar and drink all day long." And I don't for some reason. I don't. I don't know if I can do that. No. I don't and a lot of them that. are our age and older. They yeah. just they live like today. They're like, "Yes, today I'm gonna be fucked up." All day. I just know what that costs me. I don't think it's worth it anymore for nope. me. Nope. The shits, the 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 tummy aches, the headaches for the next 24, 48, 39 hours. You know, Literal I mean? poison. Yeah. I just don't know if I can do that anymore. But speaking of lots of people that drink and drive, you know, we, we were, I was specifically requested to clean up the trash along the dirt road at the back of our private pit permission property that we have really she Hold had on. she had, vicky asked me specifically to clean up trash along the back road the back back road okay yep yeah and so i was out there one day and <laughs> the the majority of the garbage Is are single serve like you'd get in an airplane alcohol containers yeah. uh like four locos or whatever the equivalent is i can tell you like, exactly what house it is uh 40s yeah or just regular 12 ounce beer bottles so it's either the just hillsdale youngins that drive the back roads and throw their shit out before they go home mm -hmm. or the the meth house yeah <laughs> i just i you know i mean which is inter it, the thing that interests me the most is <clears throat> there there seemed to be a certain it's got to be somebody close because the way it it felt when i was cleaning it's them up was i got to be done by this point here yeah which is our property unfortunately and then they either are home and they got to not have it in their on their in their car or they want to have enough time to be done and put a piece of gum in their mouth so they don't smell so it's like when i used to smoke cigarettes when yeah. i drive around i had the exact spots that i would start and finish mm -hmm. and you knew when you weren't going to hit lights because yeah. i always wanted my car to be moving so it didn't stink up my car right so the smoke always went out yep so you'd light it at a time where you knew you could smoke a whole cigarette before you hit another light yeah uh, or you so like if you were smoking down there and you were driving around the property you you knew when you would be done and when you would start it's mm -hmm. all a system mm -hmm. and it's the same whoever's doing that it's a system for yep. them yeah i agree with that and so i filled up seven tenths of a 39 gallon garbage bag seven tenths yeah i mean okay. I'm, you know 75 so percent yeah 70 percent. okay 75 percent. that's about the percentage of that full garbage can that let I me ask with you this bottles. the tv still there tv still there i couldn't pick i didn't want to <laughs> mess with that there's been a tv down there for two, uh, at I least did, two years you know i didn't just clean up our side of the road i cleaned up george's side of the road too yeah. george so I did, isn't gonna yeah, do it i did our side of the road and the other side of the george road. george can't do it no he's an old man so anyway there is still a tv george down drives there. his tractor from his house to his mailbox mm -hmm. to get his mail and back i want to be at that point some time in my life yeah yeah like but I would still like to be able to go down and like pick up shit that's in my yard. Yeah, I don't think he has the uh, energy to 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 oh, take care of his property so. anymore. 
Yeah, you're probably right. He did have somebody there that day, though. Like, there was another truck in the driveway. Looked like maybe a contractor. But also, I guess it could have just been. What if it's him that throws (laughs) drinks constantly and as he's right before he gets home, he throws it out the window? I'll ask him that next time. Yeah. I don't think he's like that. It always interests me when it's little shooters, though, like the little airplane shooters. Yeah. Because I've never, unless it was a golf trip where we were having a party. Mm Mm-hmm. And somebody would bring like little, uh, like head would buy, you know, 30, little fire uh, 30 packs of little fireball shooters. <sighs> That's like, when have you ever bought little shooters? No. Yeah. Oh, I feel like only certain party stores can you buy those. I, it leads me to believe you're underage a lot. Uh, somehow. Uh, I don't know why. Like, uh, if stealing them. So or, to uh, me, it's, I, I look at it the exact opposite. I look like a, an old construction worker. Yeah, and he keeps them in his truck because they're small. And he puts, he drinks it all day. And he he'll go he's at lunch. He has one. Yeah, and you can't see him do it because it looks like he's he just pours. He it, puts it in his coke. In his coke. Yeah, and then on his way home, he has one or two. We've worked in a job yeah. with people like that. oh, hundred yeah. percent. So, yeah, and I think it's that party store probably downtown. You know, it's not like the, the corner. It's party not the store? BP. Yeah, it's probably like that co- yeah. corner party store. Yeah, where you can look at us and tell we're not from there. Right, for yeah. sure. So. Yeah. That was a long tirade about So, nothing. hold on. I'm not done with that. I feel bad because I haven't been able to go down there. The way it's been working out is uh, I Life's missed tough. our first Illinois scouting trip, but Brett actually changed that without telling me. No, I changed the calendar invite <laughs> for both of us. <laughs> Which I don't use email. Uh, but actually, I did use email to figure it out, but it was the day of or the day before. I'm like, let, hey. <laughs> just let that marinate, everybody. <laughs> you going to <laughs> Illinois today? Um but anyways, I haven't been able to do any of that. I haven't been able to go down to the Hillsdale property. So I feel bad that I haven't been able to go down and clean up any of that stuff. With okay. You, but I'm ready mind. to go down. Like, I'm uh, sure. Like I said, I'd like to set up a tent and get Porter down there this mm-hmm. year and pick a spot where we put for a turkey. Tent. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to take him down there for turkey because mm. I'm 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 have I am afraid of ticks. Yeah. Because I've had tick issues. Um. So that sounds like a good band name. Take you know, the other day, Lauren, you know, my wife is a lactation consultant, counselor, mm-hmm. yeah, specialist. I do, I do know. And I'm telling people that are listening mm-hmm. to this. I know you know that. She was talking to me about certain methods the other day, and she used the phrase cluster pumping. Huh. I really That's like a heavy that. metal band. I like cluster pumping, yeah. which you could do that men can cluster pump, women can Hold cluster on, for pump. For milk? Mm, I mean, d- how do we cluster pump? Uh, gooey or milk? Oh, jizz? Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, cluster pumping. I what like did you call pump- some jizz earlier? Oh, you said your son is trying out for the Jizzlies on accident. Yeah, accidentally, it's the Grizzlies. Yeah. I it said, was a soft yeah, G. I said, gr- <laughs> I said Grizzies. I heard Jizzies. Grizzies. Anyway, okay, sorry. Adam almost died. Yeah, I like you. You did po- post that I was almost dead, and you were like, uh, I just said that you were very under, extremely under the weather, and everybody could use you could use positive and vibes. You were like. Uh, you're like, I'm actually not kidding. And Kel was like, well, that was a little, uh, you know, um, too far exaggerated. <laughs> I didn't almost die, but uh, I was but. in the hospital for a couple days. I had a nice little, I thought I had the flu. So after a week of that shit, I ended up going into the hospital and then found out I had pneumonia. Um, we weren't sure if I was having some sort of like heart issue. And then my heart enzymes were high, so they freaked out. Kept me in the hospital for two days, tested my heart, tested everything in my body. I basically am about to get a fifty thousand um, dollar, hundred percent agree health with that. bill. Yep, I'm excited about that. So we're gonna have to figure that out. But anyways, clean bill of health so far. They're still running me through the gamut of testing my heart. So I have a stress test April first, which I will be running or walking on a treadmill. You got to run. You, you got them walk. hokas, boy. It's like uh, walking yeah. on a cloud. It's 10 minutes, so I haven't ran 10 minutes in a long time. <laughs> I'm not sure if anybody remembers, but last time I ran a race, I ended up dry heaving in the ditch. Nobody, no one from that the, listens to this remembers that story. 50 yards from the finish line. <laughs> That's a story from another podcast ago or two ago. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I got to do a stress test, and they're still going to check to see if maybe they missed something or whatever. We don't know. So, chances are I just had pneumonia, which I did, mm-hmm. um, but... It doesn't hurt to get all these tests done anyways at my age. Well, like I told Adam, at least we find out now and you can address everything and then 
That's what I've had to come to terms with. I'm either, I either have something that I have to, like they keep saying, it's just maintenance. You have to run maintenance on it for the rest of your life, Mm -hmm. essentially. Maybe. Or, uh, or it's it's just your heart enzymes are high because Mm -hmm. you're fighting pneumonia. Yeah. So I had left lung pneumonia. The vanilla gorilla uh, is back, baby. Yeah. So been going on. uh, I'm finally at the point where I can take like a deep breath. I can still feel my lung stretch, but Hmm. um, it's not debilitating. There was uh, days where I couldn't lay down. So I was sleeping in an office chair. Mm. Uh, I was living on steroids and antibiotics. And that's why I said my stomach is I had just repaired my stomach. Your gut flora. I spent months working on my digestion. We probably even talked about it. Yeah. And it was finally like getting back to normal. And then boom, I got to take, you know, eight days of antibiotics or nine days of antibiotics that are just ripping my, raping my system of all of its good bacteria. So Mm -hmm. I'm actually feeling pretty good though. And, um, you lost a couple of LBs over the last year. Yeah. My wife made me get on the scale because she kept looking at me. She's going, you definitely look, she sees me a lot with my shirt off, which, you know, lucky Lucky her, lucky for her. (laughs) Um, Actually sent Brett a nice picture today. I'm surprised he didn't post it on any of the. Uh, nah, it was a little too far. Is it too risky? Uh, it was because you little, can see my fupa. It was a just, little bit. You know, <sighs> that's fat upper pussy. I, I have to draw a line somewhere <laughs> for this show to be semi-professional. And oh, I just meant like beefcakes. Oh, I guess I could but, put um, it on beefcakes. Yeah. But anyways, so there, there is a. Uh, that's a good picture. If anybody wants to see, uh, just text Brett. Um, but. Uh, she kept saying, man, you've definitely lost weight. Why don't you just weigh yourself? And I'm like, I don't do that. I'm not stepping on that thing. And then I kept, you know, every time I'm going to the doctor and every doctor that came and was like, how much do you weigh? How tall are you? And I'm like, well, I weigh two. I was guessing like 245 because at my heaviest, I was 255. So you, you th- were telling them you only lost 10 pounds, but you must have felt different. I knew I was slightly lighter than. Just didn't know where. Uh, I just figured just a tit hair. Mm. Um but then, so anyways, it got on the scale and it was 225. And I'm like, holy shit, that was a nice feeling to know that mm-hmm. uh, the over the last year I've lost you know, like 30 pounds. Were both feet on the scale? Both feet were on the scale. Okay, yeah, I even good. had shorts on, so drop another, okay. you know, seven tenth of a seven tenth of an ounce. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. But yeah, so, um, and like dad just said, I think it's all in your legs. Oh, I, you got them that little, I only lost weight in my legs. So you're the real big gulp cowboy <laughs> yeah, with now coffee I'm, stir. Angles. Now I must really look like a top, um, <laughs> like the kind you spin. But uh, yeah. So anyways, I'm finally healthy. Good. I hadn't. I, I was just thinking I was giving Brett shit because he was sick like two weeks, three weeks in a row. Mm-hmm. You had two different things. And I'm like, what have you been doing? And then, then all of a sudden I'm like, man, I haven't gotten sick in a long time. Boom. Fucked. My daughter got the stomach bug twice in two weeks. Mm-hmm. And so I'm scared shitless because my body's in like I can't hardly breathe, mm-hmm. let alone throw up. And we, Lord knows how you and I throw up our toes. Yeah. Um. So I was, you know, I stayed at my in-laws because they were out of town with That's my son. Right. And just it was our house was an absolute fucking mess. So it's every other winter here. Every Something other happens. winter. It's the plague hits this house. We mm-hmm. all get every sickness that's good and around for mm-hmm. the course of a month and a half or two months. We all get everything. And then we're good. Like for the next 24 months, we barely get anything. Mm-hmm. And then that second deep winter. So like after Christmas time into January, we all succumb to it again. It's it's literally every other January. Because yeah. I always am excited to hunt the late season up here. Mm-hmm. And inevitably, I'm sick. Yeah. And it wasn't last January. It was the one before where I was yeah. really bad. Pisses me off, man. It is. It does seem like it's a cycle. And I'm mm-hmm. wondering if there's like, okay, so Obama. do we need to go this to Florida for two months? Like, should we go to Florida right after Christmas and live there January, I, February? I think to it's just be everybody. outside and in the sun and, and avoid, you know. Yeah, maybe um, being trapped in the house. I think that I, I told Kelly, the kids need to not go to school. There's two weeks where everybody's fucking sick in that school. My kids don't go to school. That's a good point. And we all get it. I just think it's but the, how do hold you on, know? Hold it's on. Like my, I got to I got to fix this. My kids are homeschooled. <laughs> <laughs> I don't just not educate my children. All of my kids go to school here at home. So there I clarified that. I just think there's this uh, there's this two week window where it's almost like 
I'm I'm like just don't send them to school. Yeah, because it's at Lakeland, like it's at the hockey yeah. rink, it's at every restaurant you go to, it's in every bathroom you go to, it's at every grocery mm-hmm. store. Fucking ev- That's thing, the, everything is filthy. So everything much. is fucking filthy. Mm-hmm. And so for that, for the winter months up here, man, fuck it. I'm like I'm gonna self quarantine for two weeks. We're well, just this gonna- is you know. This the most fun. depressing introduction to a <laughs> podcast I've ever done, I think. Yeah, but, everybody's uh, going through it, so yeah. everybody's probably got a, a tit hair to flit hair with, you know? That's right. That's right. Exa- I was going to say those words exactly, <sighs> as a matter of fact. But let's talk about the great outdoors. Okay. Because you just said you've sort of been, you know, you've been under the weather. Um, what do you, Adam, mm. hope to get accomplished? You know, we're 197 days from October 1st. Oh, wow. I, I just happened to look at it this morning. Uh that's a long time, but it's not. Like right. it's already March. It's never as long. It's not. Time it's is, gonna go fast. Time we, doesn't exist. Summers anymore. are busy. You got a new venture coming up this summer. Like it's gonna go fast. But what do you hope to accomplish in the next couple of months to either scratch that itch that you have for the outdoors, mm-hmm. either scouting, shed hunting, turkey hunting, uh, stand prep? You know what? What do you hope to get done over the next couple of months before you really get in the depth of summer? Well, I've I've sort of got it to where I, I'm I'm hope obviously I don't think there's going to be any issues, but I've got my uh, I turned in what the uh, I applied for the turkey tag, mm-hmm. um, but I'm almost always never had an issue. Even not applying, you can still get the leftovers. But anyways, turkey hunting, um, which will I will continue shooting. Yeah, um, like your bow, I said, right? I, yep, shooting my bow. Um, I'm not going to change strings until my idea is to change after turkey season. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do anything crazy because if I'm yeah, going to go hunt um, right now, I'm going to hunt with what I've got. Um, and that's almost going to be like a mixture of peeking around the property and seeing what I want to do maybe different this coming year, even though mm-hmm. we know that property. Um, I think we're going to have a chance at a, a little bit bigger deer options this year. I think so. Down there. Just judging by what we've seen left over mm-hmm. that made it through the year, and and there's a lot of young ones that I think are going to be decent. I think there's a lot of two and three year olds that survived. Yeah. I don't know where the fuck they were at. I don't but know where they were. Either. They it survived. Blows my mind. Um, and it blows my mind that they show up two weeks after the season's over. Mm-hmm. And you're like, holy shit, there's one of them. Um, but I just want to take a peek at things. It's it's just a chance for me to get out there, um, and keep my equipment going, um. Life has thrown me that curveball to where I don't know what my hunting season's exactly going to look like. Mm-hmm. Um, and why? Why do you say that? You mean with the the new Explain venture? It. Yeah. Um, everything sort of happened all at once. I was I was already looking at leasing a kitchen space, a commercial kitchen space. For Not one, everybody knows what you do. For start at that start at that point. So my wife and I have Taste Smile Repeat, which is a personal chef service. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as sort of like a fun project, I started Salad Fever. Yeah, you did. <laughs> um, That's Salad Fever. Salad Fever, because we're hot for salads. Mm-hmm. Um, in which I, I, we were at like a catering or something, even if it might have even been your barn. And you just really could not get good. Like they, no one has unique good salads. You always got the same options. Yep. Um, you know, it might be iceberg or just the bags of like whatever that they just throw in there. Typically, a lot of brown lettuce. A lot of brown lettuce, a lot of basic stuff, not a lot of uh, creativity mm-hmm. or flavor. Or not We didn't go on any flavor town trips when the salads right. were around. So my thought was, I'm just going to start this business to where everybody's being bombarded with sort of like shitty food right now. I feel like we're in a food, um, I don't know. Oh, uh, just like we're in a downfall of food right now. Oh. Um, there's food a food recession. For, yeah. Um, a food pandemic. Yeah. Yes. So a culinary pandemic. I'm going to offer. I'm going to have fun with this and do like different takes on salads and and make my own dressings and do all this stuff because I'm doing it anyways for clients. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. I'm going to offer a delivery service of individual salads. So I started doing that and it was it, it turned out to be this really sort of easy system. It was very easy to systemize it and it was making a good percentage profit, like a profit percentage. Um, so all of a sudden as I'm, I paid $185 to get licensed out of this commercial kitchen. Um, 
I have people come to me that are opening a a new it's called the rail yard in our in our city and it's it's basically like a, I, I call it like an outdoor entertainment facility mm-hmm. I don't even know what you'd call it but it's got five different restaurants all inside of this you know sort of outdoor indoor space mm-hmm. sort of like the back lot or up in Petoskey or Little Fleet in Traverse City mm-hmm. um and they traveled to a lot of those different places and they're trying to, they wanted to fix all those little problems that they found at all of these things. But anyways, they're like, we need a healthy option here. And we've heard a lot about your salad. So here's the deal. We want to be like, their idea was to be like a catalyst for people who can't start their own restaurant. Yeah. Like, like I can't go buy a restaurant right, right. now. So they're like, what we're trying to do is team up with you guys and um, we're going to build out a storage container that you can, you know, you you just sign a lease, pay me 10% That's of every awesome. dollar, and you go in and um, sell your salads. You awesome. Know? So that starts, and I agreed to it. So yeah. I, w- <laughs> I don't get my 185 bucks back, unfortunately, but that's okay. Hell yeah, it's um, okay. I decided to do that, and we have just sort of been on this kind of wild ride where Unfortunately, I got sick, which was difficult to deal with all of this stuff. But we were supposed to open on May 1st. And I'm like, holy shit, we have like three months Mm -hmm. to open our first place. (laughs) And I don't think it's just going to be like a restaurant. I think it's going to be pretty um, a pretty wild. I think there's going to be a lot of people there. I think so. Yeah. Um, Now, that being said. As of right now, we aren't open in the winter there. So the only restaurant that will be open is Chris Belly's on the inside. Mm-hmm. So the outside places, which I will be one of those, is a six-month lease okay. operating from May 1st to October. Okay. Um, now, that can change because we we could see that October is supposed to be decent and decide to stay open. Sure. So that's I don't nice. really know what October is going to look like. That's a very interesting uh, predicament you find yourself in yeah. because it is something that is a tremendous opportunity for you as a person and a business and a brand in order to grow for your family but it is certainly going to tickle the the genitals of hunting season so, so this is where i had to step back and go okay the first thing i thought was how's this going to affect my hunting season <laughs> so just i want everybody to remember Four years ago, Adam was like, how the fuck can you sit still in the woods for so long yeah. all the time? And now his first thought was, man, this is something I've always wanted to do. But how can I how is this going to screw up my deer hunting? I love it. Yeah. So I knew I had to do it. And I knew I had to do it because I I truly believe that this is the opportunity that allows us to take off, pump the brakes a little bit on the amount of labor that Kelly and I are doing mm-hmm. and putting into our businesses because we're 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 not getting any younger, and we're seem to be working harder and harder and harder every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and we needed to find something that was going to lead us to build a team, yeah, that was going to be able to run a system while we sort of were able to to operate the actual business mm-hmm. and not just build the product. Um, so I knew I had to do it, uh, and I had to step back and go, okay. I, I can't survive on on just like hunting is not I can't have that be my only thing. Mm-hmm. I have to I have to make sure that this is my life and that hunting is my hobby and the second part of it. I mm-hmm. mean, my family is obviously the first somewhere part. they're included in the first part. But um, so I just had to step back and say, you know what? Worst case scenario is this year I have to just be fine. Um, hunting my Hillsdale property, going to Illinois once or twice, and going to um, our Brighton property. There you go. So I still have great – I know that the Brighton property we hunt, is it's only 10 acres, but I know that every single one of those deer, the couple big eights – or they're not they're not as big as Hillsdale, but the, the couple eights that were there and the, mm-hmm. the 10-pointer all survived. That's a pretty good starting point. So I know they're all going to be <laughs> – they all roam that property mm-hmm. every day, and I saw them last year on my last sit there. So, um, those are just my opportunities this coming year, and I know I'll be able to make those work. Those are still great opportunities, more so than a lot of people. Have. I don't know if I'll be able to do like I don't think we're even going to do Kansas, but um, we can still get a point just so that yeah. the next time we want to go, it's almost like a shoe in. Yeah. So like, um, 
we had talked about trying maybe Ohio or whatever. Which, I'm going to hunt Ohio because I'm going to be there for work. Yeah, which I would still like to do, but it's going to be one of those things where I just have Last to fi- I have to figure out if yeah. it's if we're going to be open in in October. Yeah. Um maybe I just stick to my, you know, mm-hmm. I always have loved just the drive down to Hillsdale mm-hmm. and I, I have always told myself I'm not going to ever let that property become um not as fun. So I have to make sure that that was just sort of something I had to step back and say, okay, my goals maybe are changing to where I'm not mm-hmm. going to travel as much, yeah. but I still have a lot of great opportunities. Yeah. I just, I might not be hunting um, every weekend. Right. Like I have been fortunate enough to do. That being said, I am trying to do this to where I I have somebody running this that allows me to leave here and there. So but you got to start somewhere. And sometimes that somewhere is where you are doing all the work. Right. Right. Which, and honestly, you're 39. Okay. Right, so right, you're, right. you're going to be 40 this year. Okay. If you take one year out of your life to build a brand and a business and mm-hmm. a product that grows with you as you grow older, then you're right. Maybe next year you aren't working on hunting season. That's where Tito the salad guru works and during hunting season. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. She, she, La- Lavandra. Shatuda. Sure. But, <laughs> and that's the thing is when we initially met with these guys, um, I, l- I like both of the guys that, that are, are opening this together. Two out of the three. Um, the other one's a silent partner, but we instantly talked about, you know, they've already have plans for doing more of these. Nice. So it, my goal now is already to be building this as something that I can do here, mm-hmm. here, 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 and then eventually have, you know, have them in different locations all mm-hmm. over to where I'm just repeating oh, for sure. the system. And then, you know, I'm ultimately just driving around and checking on them. And, and that's even that, you know, mm-hmm. I, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. And that opens the door for me to hunt even yep. more down yeah. the road. So. I think that's exciting. Again, I, I knew that was coming, but, you know, a lot of people don't. And so the opportunity to, to explain kind of where you're coming from and which is why you're excited to, you know, over the next course of the next couple of months, like, hey, I really want to while I'm building this, it's you and I both agree on this. Just being outside mm-hmm. clears the mind, mm-hmm. re- recenters you, refocuses you, grounds you, you know, cleanses everything and maybe if you have a stressful week, you go down there on a Friday, you take a little toot around, go say hi to George, look for some sheds, right. take a look. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just cleanse the cleanse the mind. Um, get down there and do that. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, so that that being said, that has been consuming already because yeah. we have we started our meetings with them three months before we're supposed to open. So right. it was, all of a sudden it was like we're going to we're going <laughs> to sign this lease. We're going to do this. We have to go. Yeah. All of us have to go balls to the wall like now mm-hmm. to get open. So I haven't had time to um, do anything else. Nothing like Valentine's Day. Like I, you're not getting a card. You're not getting. Fl- I didn't have time. I, my mind mm-hmm. can't take on anything else. So it's just been that for now. So, but- well, let, instead of talking about hunting right this second, I want to ask you about salad fever. So. I'm very well versed in everything that you do over there as far as your creativity is concerned. Can you tell anybody that listens to this what mm. your absolute number one favorite salad is that you have ever created? What is it called and what's in it? Yeah. Uh, mine is the Hold Your Buns, it's called. Um, and I called it that because it is basically a take on a banh mi sandwich. So okay. Okay. Yeah, you you've had a bun me. Sandwich. I have, um, but obviously it has this is without the bun. So um, the ingredients are, you know, I have pickled jalapeno and pickled um, onion, red onion. It's got cucumber, shredded carrot. I do um, pulled pork. So I, I I basically cook up. I instapot like four, usually about four four pork butts. Um, and then it's shredded. Um, I usually cook mine in like beer and orange juice. That's like my go-to. Um, and then when I'm done with that, I lay it out on a, I take it out, shred it and lay it out on a pan. And then I drizzle it with either maple syrup or honey or a little bit of both. And then I just broil it for like four minutes to kind of crust it up. And then that is the, the meat option on that salad. And then the dressing is like a, uh, 
it's like a bon me, you know, sriracha, honey, sort of may like uh, creamy um, base dressing. I know you like the cheeseburger. I do. I love the cheeseburger. Yeah, but I've never had the hold your buns, and now I want one. Yeah, it's uh, oh. it's just I like the crazy ones, the yeah. ones that are are uh, like the French tickler is a take on a Monte Cristo sandwich. <laughs> um, you know, Carlitz crazy or Carlitz cranberries is a fun one. Um, even mom, mom designed one called, uh, the pot belly goddess, but mm-hmm. I like all the ones that are a little bit different. Um, but I have my top sellers that, uh, I'm building my menu. I have a couple of the top sellers, a couple of the, a couple of the more unique ones, and then I'll rotate. I'll have like a weekly rotator, which I will just do something sort of like the weird shit. So when we went to Kansas last year in September, Adam brought the food and he brought a whole bunch of those. But one of the, one thing he didn't mention is you can get these at, with a rice bed instead of a lettuce bed on them. So almost like a lifestyle. So what I realized, I do offer. So I offer right now, I offer delivery individual meals. And I, I do three salads a week. And one of them typically has a fruit, a fresh fruit. Because uh, a lot of the ladies like that. Mm-hmm. A lot of men do too. But um, So not necessarily always that salad. But I started to realize that everything I was offering on lettuce would be fucking awesome on rice too. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know what? It's actually cheaper for me to make a rice um, mm-hmm. base. So I, uh, you, you have your choice. Each salad, you can get greens or rice. And it's the same toppings, dressing, everything. Um, just switch your base. And so. he, would, he brought those to Kansas in September last year. And that was so nice to hunt our balls off when it was super hot and then come back to the hotel room and have fucking pre-made and that meals was so that was i think i did rice bowls and uh-huh. it was the i have no beef with chuck yes because it was it was uh chuck roast uh-huh um so shredded that and it had pistachios and like tomato oh, yeah. and i don't know and aioli on cheese it had parmesan garlic cheese, aioli shaved parmesan it was roasted cheese. garlic aioli yeah so yeah i fuck those were so good it's like uh, it's like you just take salads and you, it, it's unlimited for me. Yeah. If you if I have the time to think about it, I would do like one kind of crazy one and then like a mainstay mm-hmm. and then a fruit one. Those are kind of my three. Mm-hmm. I do. But anyways, that's the gist. Well, thank you for elaborating. I think there was probably some people that listened who found that very entertaining because I know I love <laughs> I love the creativity aspect of it. That's something that you were you were always very creative artistically with music and art. And I think you've been able to parlay that into I business. So. Yeah. You know, we the po- Gene from Salad Fever started on a podcast. You turned it into a fucking business. That's now true. you just turned it into an actual storefront. So kudos to you. Which I had to explain that the the girl that's running the social media <laughs> at the the rail yard reached out to me and said, "Hey, do you have a bio?" And I said, "Yeah, give me a minute. I'll write it." I, hold on a second. I also want to say, if anybody ever listens to Hot Butter Podcast, where Adam raps there was a lot of take you out back and do you in the grass <laughs> which you are now taking your business to a rail yard oh yeah <laughs> we can do you in the grass <laughs> rail you in the yard oh boy this is full circle yeah, everything is coming in so you were saying you had to create a bio yeah so i actually i, I said <laughs> i just need to let you know that take whatever you want from my bio but I, my goal with everything i'm doing right now is just to be as completely honest about <laughs> what it is so I told I, my bio is to the point. I told her exact. I said this is based off of it all started back in 2016 on a podcast with a character named Eugene, and uh, and I even said it was he's named after the the pants, the <laughs> denim, the pants, and uh, and it went through that whole thing, and, and then they shared everything but that. <laughs> yeah, but she did share some of the the mm-hmm. good stuff. But anyways, it was from a podcast. Yeah, yeah so. Sure. Um. Yeah, it's just uh, everything's coming into light with the uh, the the funsies for sure. I think I started to realize that I just I'm just gonna do shit that is what just how I really am. You should. It, it works. You don't have to. Nothing's forced. It's authentic, and people yeah. feel that. Yeah. And that's the the names, the music I put mm-hmm. with it. It's just it it just I it allows me to have fun with what I'm doing and makes me put out a better product. Absolutely. And Which like I, I said, if everybody can, can do that, it. do yeah. it. That's how I feel about beefcakes. Like, I don't, 
it's incredibly inappropriate a lot of stuff i talk about but that's me i'm, mm-hmm. I'm immature still i'm a i'm an adult teenager still well, we don't we don't really it's for fun up. man i don't want i'm 43 i turned 43 yesterday i don't want to get old i want to feel like that all the time mm-hmm. what are your goals for hunting this year Ah, uh, that was that was a horrible segue but i had to do it yeah um I don't know, and I, I feel personally like, I, like. Do you have goals, like personal goals? I think we we touched on on what I was looking to get, like what I was my kills, mm-hmm. um, which I think was like four does and and a buck here and a buck in another state. Okay. Um. I, I think, oh man, it's gonna be things are shifting, so a lot of it's gonna be sort of managing where i go and how i go about hunting i think that i think what you're gonna find is this is gonna this is gonna take you on a journey for being the most efficient hunter you've ever had to be because your time is so valuable now and i think i'm excited to see how uh, this this goes well i still look at a lot of things that like there's things i want to do and then i sort of step back and go okay i'm not there yet Mm mm-hmm like I'd love to get a, a hard top on the back of my truck and make it a little hotel room and be able to go hunt and mm-hmm. uh, have all that shit there and sleep there and um, but to be realistic, I'm I'm not I haven't been hunting long enough to get to that point yet. I, it's mm-hmm. just not it's not even fair for me to say that that's where I'm at. Okay, so I look more at like a lot of the things you've done in the last even year or two, um, sort of getting more into those things. I fell in love like in Kansas when you would drop me off at a different spot and I would find a a really special area and Mm -hmm. then that area ended up having a buck. Yeah. Um, So I think being more comfortable traveling Mm -hmm. to different spots is one of the biggest things for me this year is just tickling that. Like Sure. Uh, going to Illinois is one of them, which you and I, I'll, I'll probably only do with you. Um, but being able to go out there and, and figure that out, um, I do still want to look at some of the local places. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a feeling that those are going to get a bit overrun this year yeah. and I'm not sure why I have that feeling, but like I, on the driving here today, there was a truck in one of the pull-ins and I'm like, is that guy scouting? Like I've never noticed this before until... Maybe I started noticing more because I'm actually going back there, but um, I don't know. I went out Friday and did some more scout in, in some areas by where we went, but in some areas that I have never stepped foot in before. There were tree stands and cameras everywhere I went. Mm-hmm. Every fucking where I went. And I'm like, holy shit, man. I've been through the swamps. I am five miles away from my truck. Like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. But good i'm happy that people are doing that i but i but it it's like man i really spent like four days scouting out here i don't know that i'm gonna hunt here right like i just think it's there's too much pressure here yes there's deer here i think there's too much pressure i now i need to move to another spot but it took me three days like three full three times three so nine hours of scouting which it, i guess is not a lot but man i i think people are really hunting the shit out of holly state I do too, and I, I don't, really believe. I feel it. like the, I, I keep hearing like, "Oh, that the hunters, the the amount of hunters has declined around here." And I look around and I'm like, "It is I don't way think it's crazier not, than I've not ever here. seen." I think in the UP it's down. I think in the upper lower peninsula it's down. I think, but then I think once you get below ten, I don't believe that our numbers are that far down. No. In fact, what I think is happening is people are traveling down here to hunt. Right. Well, like uh, a couple things about the UP, Uncle Kelton's got uh, uh, one of our friends. He's he's an acquaintance of mine, more of a friend of Kelton's, but um, his family has a cabin up on a bunch of property in the UP, and he was like, yeah, we can go up there and hunt. Nobody hunts it. Uh, so they've talked about that, but then we were just sitting down talking to that guy about the UP, and he's like, I see more wolves than I ever do deer mm-hmm. because of, and you ended up bringing up the logging. You know, it's owned by a lot of logging industry, and, mm-hmm. and they're just... They're just driving the deer out of there. So I told Kelton, I'm like, I'm not sure if it's going to be worth it for us to go up there. I would have imagined that there'd be some big deer up there, but maybe there's nothing. 
And I sure I, as hell don't want to deal with wolves. I'm not going up there. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'll go up there to do something else, but I ain't going up there to, I mean, I'll go up there to fish. Yeah. But I'm not going to go up there to deer hunt. Yeah. Not a chance. I don't think it, that is in my, um, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull that off this year, but um, like I said, I think for me, things change. So now it's almost like I have to go back and just be like, work on the things I've been working on and really hone those skills. Mm-hmm. Um, I still had goals with mobile hunting mm-hmm. and I, I know my money has obviously shifted to have to go into other things. So I'm not sure I'm going to be able to buy like a, a lone wolf stand this year. Right. Um, I just don't know if that's so just hunting with my XOP might be the same thing I'm doing this year, which is fine because it's what I know. Mm-hmm. But um, it's I instead of me thinking, OK, I'm going to jump to a bunch of new stuff. Um, I think I have to sort of step back and say, like, OK. I'm going to sit down and, and talk with you and we're going to pick like, this is what I'm going to do this year. I'm going to yeah. go to Hillsdale. I got the Brighton 10 acres mm-hmm. and then let's go to Illinois. Yeah. Okay. And that's going to be my focus. And then I'm just going to take everything that I've, and, and like, like I said, I've already fixed my broadhead issue. Mm-hmm. That's good. So um ended up purchasing six of the sever broadheads. So mm-hmm. that's going to be what I switch to. I'm, I'm probably going to switch. To those after turkey season. I think yeah. I'm going to use my three as well. broadheads I already have um, for turkey season, and then I'll switch over. But like just honing in on all those skills, um, I'd like to move around um, our Hillsdale property a little more this year, Like, which is things you've been doing. Yeah. And you've progressed on from those things. But like um, to get more comfortable with, with not just always going to... I spent a lot of time working one stand this year down there, um, which worked, but mm-hmm. um, I think that this year it's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to look at some more unusual locations because mm-hmm. I think we talked about one last year and I hunted it very, li- a very little bit, but I think that spot is a very, very good spot. It just needed to be hunted more and I may see less there, but a lot more of the, the bit larger deer might be traveling through there. Right. So you might have to hunt it more and then move 30 yards and see less uh, does and whatnot. Yeah. And less of the little bucks, but you might be getting the big bucks moving through those spots. And that, mm-hmm. that's a good thing. So, right. Cause I'm, I'm like, oh, skyscraper. I see fucking 10 yeah, deer every day. Exactly. Um, and and skyscraper, skyscraper should stay skyscraper and never move. It should mm-hmm. always be there. That's a kill stand. That's always going to be a kill stand. It'll always be a kill stand. But I think things like my swamp, has been there forever and did one person shoot like headshot a deer out of headshot it. a doe out of there this year that's been there for as long as i've been down there and only one deer has ever been shot out of it the deer just stopped using that spot after summertime and that's okay but let's fucking move it i actually think that stands in a in a great spot but it's like 50 yards off then let's move it yeah but like do we need to if if like uh, i don't like I set up my XOP in the spot where I'm saying 50 yards uh, yeah. east of that, and had yeah. bucks walk right under me. So I, that but was if it the, helps you guys, like right. if it helps you to not have to hang a stand, then we can move some permanent sets. But my idea with that is okay. I also then the, at that point another 50 to 75 yards to the east is where a great spot because mm-hmm. now we're getting close to the field, that mm-hmm. corner, the south edge. Yeah. So maybe we do move your swamp back. So yeah, maybe adjusting things yeah, a little bit, and that's so. a permanent stand in there. And then we move, and then we start mobile hunting the south field edge or whatever. Yep. Um, well, that's good. I mean, I I know we had talked about like you possibly doing some saddle hunting. Yeah, which I'd love to try. It's just I'm not going to go go be going and buying. New so equipment. there's a there, realistically, you could try my saddle. And see if it's something that you like, because I don't, I don't have to wear my, I could wear my harness and hang a stand. Mm -hmm. And so if it's something that you felt like would be really helpful to you at some point, you could use it. Yeah. Um, Just an idea. Yeah. And that, so that's something I'm interested in. It's just not, I would say it's not my, one of my priorities. Right. Um, I think you would benefit. I think you would benefit from saddle hunting. You think I'd like standing up like that and tilting I just think it'd be. E- it's just it's just easier to hang a saddle set 
and that it's is the less thing. to I, carry in. I mean, it's just that light. is one thing. Like even mobile mobile hunting with a hang on. Yeah. Um, yes, mine's a little heavier than y- y'all's, but mm-hmm. um, it's still like if I, like setting it up when it's when it's seventeen degrees mm-hmm. fucking sucks, right? Um, and and um, I have thought several times like how do I go even more minimal, and that would be having just a a base and sticks. Start one sticking. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> If anything, no. You're down 30 no. pounds, man. It's a, No time is I better than the know. present for one second. 15 of that is muscle <laughs> that I lost, probably. So uh, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely going to try your saddle here this Good. summer. Good. Um, I have no idea if I get one and I start using one, but um, I think it'd be great. I think I, I, I imagine myself enjoying hunting out of a saddle. Mm-hmm. Um, here's one thing I can tell you that I'm I've been thinking a lot about is I I hang my uh my safety line mm-hmm. or whatever you call it my lifeline up above my head right so mm-hmm. I always get up there and there's always a moment where I disconnect and I'm standing there and I'm facing the tree and I try not to move very much but I got to unhook everything and get my my what I climb the tree with as my safety harness is what becomes my lifeline so I have to disconnect it from me from my waist Hang it from the tree and then re and then tie my safety harness to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'm I'm keep thinking to myself, is there an easier way I can do this to where I can just get up in this stand, have it attached to the tree, keep it on my at my waist and just spin around somehow without having to disconnect and I'm already tied to the tree at my waist. Yeah, I'm sure we can come up with something. You know what I mean? Like, is there yeah. a way to do that? Yeah, I think a lot of guys are taking two two linemen with them, and right. so they're never being disconnected. But then there's also like the guy I just talked to the other day on the show. Um, he's like, yeah, and I, sometimes I don't wear a harness. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, ah, just the way I am. That's just how I grew up. And he's like, I know a lot of people would frown upon that, and so would XLP. But it's just it's just who I am. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not there. Like. I have recently, like in the last three years, probably sat in a tree with no tree stand or with no harness. If I set, if I'm in a spot where I set my stand up less than I am tall, so that's sub six foot, I won't wear anything. Mm -hmm. And I know that everyone's, oh, you could still die. But the reality is I would also, I could also just land on my feet. It's like not worried about that. So that's the only time. So for me, I don't. I could never do that because it I, it would affect my shooting. Like I have to feel comfortable standing out on the edge of a platform. Yeah, knowing that I am tied to a tree. Have you always been a heights guy? I do. I've never loved heights. See, and that's just that I don't mind heights. Yeah, I've never loved them. Hmm. So that's why it took me a year just to move. From I, a I tent remember to a tree. <laughs> yeah, um, I wasn't. I was like, I don't want to hunt up there. Yeah. But that first year, I was also using a crossbow, which is a fucking pain in the ass to carry around. Right. So, um, you ever wish you still crossbow hunted? No. Never? No, I don't think I would feel proud of myself. Interesting. If I killed a deer with a crossbow. It's just, there's just something about, because I've shot it since and I've, I've, I've taken, I've, I love let, let my wife shoot it mm-hmm. and I've taken it in the backyard just to keep it shooting, like right. just to keep it oiled, let's just say. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fucking thing is just like, it doesn't get any easier, especially if you're using a, a stick, like a stabilizer, mm-hmm. like you just set that thing in there, pull the trigger, nothing moves. There's no sound. That thing flies like a motherfucker and goes straight in the target. Mm-hmm. Like. There is no no challenge now, except carrying it out there. <laughs> you're going to kill the deer. I don't have to worry about like yeah. having a real bad shot. But I don't. It, it, I don't feel proud of myself. I don't think anymore. I wouldn't you, feel proud. Do of Do you myself. think you'll ever get to a point where you need to go to a traditional bow? Mm, no, no, not right. You now. think compound? Well, that's not what I asked you. I think. I said, do you ever think you will get to a point? I would say no, but I, that I, that oh. could just be because right now oh, I don't care enough. It's hard about enough. That. Yeah. Like I, I don't have to, it doesn't make me feel, I don't look at it and go like, that's a fucking man right there. Like, but you don't, I mean, cool. be, because it's those cool. guys, those purists, yeah. 
will look at a person who shoots a compound and be like, you're cheating, just like the crossbow guy's cheating. Correct. <laughs> and, that's, I, and I don't agree with that, but. No, and that's fine. I, yeah. You know. I understand their whatever. sentiment. But um, I think it's cool that that's a it. thing. Um, I just, I have no desire to do that right now. Like I said, right now is, is a key word because yeah. down the road, there might be a point where shooting a compound, I'm still honing my skills on shooting my compound. Oh, mode. me too. So I for cannot, me to say- I cannot hit my fucking target. I mean, I can hit my target right now, but something is off yeah. and I don't know what it is. Yeah. So for me to say, I'm going to go get a, a traditional bow yeah. is only because I, that would only be me trying to be cool. And I don't, there's nothing about really? that, that you have no desire to, I, I am not ready for that. Yeah. But you think it would be just be, for you to, for yourself? Cause I, I believe that there are people out there that go into a traditional bow because they think it makes them more of a man. badass motherfucking hunter. And then, yeah, I agree I, I with you. There's a lot of people that do it and find that mm-hmm. they can't do it. I agree with you. I, I would like, I, I would like to learn how. I think there are hunters that are good enough. With a compound bow, mm-hmm. and they've been doing it long enough, and they're yeah. like, "I need to move to something that, that's true that that is like moving from a crossbow to a compound bow as a beginner." Mm-hmm. That's where you get to. You get to this point where you're like, "Okay, I'm an expert. It's not now hard. It's not hard to, enough anymore." Right? Yeah. I need to go to. I need to get deer closer. Mm-hmm. I need to get them twenty yards, and I need to be shooting a yeah. bow that doesn't have all the gadgets. That's interesting. So I think that'd be super cool to get there, but I'm mm-hmm. not even. It's not even in my. Right now, I would tell you no. Yeah, I, I would like to learn. I, I'm not. I'm not at a point where I want to take one in the woods yet. But mm-hmm. I, I would like to get to a point where it's like, I am good shooting traditional. Like I said, I I just started shooting left handed with a compound a couple mm-hmm. of years ago. Right. So let me just thrive doing that for a little while. But I do. I do think I, there is going to be a point where I want to add that in a little bit. Yeah. And and I and I think there'll be it will be situational. To where I go, this is a situation where I'm taking the m- fewest things with me as possible because I have very little room or, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like mm-hmm. it's going to be a very specific reason why I choose to hunt that way that time. Um, and so, yeah, I, I imagine that at some point I probably So let me will. ask you this. Uh, so for, for Brett's birthday gift, I actually got his list from my mother uh, like four days before today. Which is weird um, because it went out at least seven to ten. I don't think days I've ago. ever gotten a list a list from for my brother of Christmas or anything. Nobody needs to buy me anything, right? So my mom happened to be at my house and I said, "Hey, uh, did Brett ever give you a list or anything? Mm-hmm. I don't just want to go." So along with all the shit that's been going on in my life, I started to realize I'm not taking time to do like the things I was used to. Like uh, like I said for Valentine's Day. I, I didn't get Kelly anything because mm-hmm. I, I was in a point where I couldn't stop moving from all these other things to yeah. take my brain and go, go to the store, right. buy fucking flowers. <laughs> I just didn't. And I told her, I said, I'm more disappointed in myself than you are because she didn't care. Um, but I just can't, for some reason, I can't unlock myself to do all these things for like a bunch of, like, I can't do gifts I right understand. now. I'm not doing well. So anyways, I said to my mom. So she, anyway, she texted me your, your list when she got home. She was at my house. Uh, so I got you, um, long story short, mm-hmm. I got you the jet boil that you had on there, which I didn't yeah. know what it was at first. And I looked at it and I said, okay, I know I have an idea of what's going on here. And I was also looking at your list, but um, what did you want that for? For those times where I'm hungry and don't have a store to go to to eat. Or if I plan on spending a whole day balls deep in the woods, I can eat while I'm out there. Well, I noticed you had asked for a heated blanket as well. Got one of those. So So that's because when I was in Kansas this year in December, and uh, it got colder than I thought it was going to get, and Big Daddy was very cold. Mm -hmm. And uh, (laughs) I also have a solar-powered generator Mm -hmm. that I bought, so I can take that. And um, I just wondered if you're trying to really turn the back of your truck into like a mobile hotel room. Yeah, yeah. I would like to be able to not drop one hundred and fifty dollars every time I go. Every single night, I want to stay out of town and hunt. Yeah, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Mm-hmm. I want to be a little more comfortable sleeping in my. That's truck. what I got out of it. I was yep. like, okay, I've I've listened to podcasts. I know, I've heard that the heated blanket is all you'll need. He wants a jet boil, which I'm guessing mm-hmm. he wants to take out to cook little bits of food here yep. and there. And then there, I don't know if there's anything else, but yeah. So that's why I was wondering if you're mm-hmm. really trying to modify your truck. I mean, 
I've got an inflatable mattress in there. I've got, uh, like I said, I got the solar generator now. I've got the heated blanket now. Um, so how are people running? So my question is, how where are you getting electricity from? Are I just you, told you, my solar generator. So you, you have to have a generator of some sort. Mm-hmm. So last year, I would leave my truck on. I would just wake up in the middle of the night, freezing fucking cold, and s- turn my truck on. Were you in the back, the bed? Uh, no, I was in my back seat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're in the bed of your truck, my question was, are you leaving? Is there a way that they're leaving? Like, we have a plug. Mm-hmm. Are you getting a uh, like a power strip and running it into your plug, and then you're running electrical off of that? Yeah. So Matt, the Mobile Hunters Dojo Matt, mm-hmm. uh, he drilled a hole in the back of his hard cap. And retrofit a recept, uh, either I don't know, I don't know exactly how like he did those it. Those caps that go in there, and then you can run cords. And he, so he'll yeah. go stay at a campsite and hook the power up to his camper and have mm-hmm. everything like that. So he hooks it right up to his. Tree. Now the the uh, the non typical mm-hmm. Josh is retrofitting his too. I, so I really pay close attention to those guys on Instagram and what they're doing because they've got some really creative ideas on how to retrofit. They're doing shit like I'm always like, it. where are these motherfuckers getting? First of all, the money and the time. <laughs> like what in the hell? Because <laughs> I'm working my ass off. I don't have any extra money to be doing that shit. And number two, where are they getting the time to do this? <sighs> their spare time. Yeah, like I, I just, I don't know. I don't either. Because I know Matt said he started his own business Mm -hmm. i know you got it they just and he's got children yeah like it's do i not carve enough time out (laughs) i guess not um geez it's just crazy like i i can't imagine having to go out my truck and work on something right now like i mean it'd be like 30 minutes to an hour yeah he's working on a boat he's like modifying a boat to to have like a fishing boat or whatever i'm like geez man Mm mm-hmm it's impre- it's it's inspiring. Yeah, it I is. find that stuff inspiring. So like I that's one of my things I want to do is eventually have like a hard cap on the back of my truck. Mm-hmm. And and have that be that that cozy little bed mm-hmm. that you crawl into and you have got heat, yep. plugs and all that shit or electrical. Mhm. And uh you just don't have to stay at uh, an Airbnb or a hotel. Now, I would still spring for the Airbnb for a 10-day trip to Kansas. Yeah. Or whatever. I think you have to because you need laundry. That long weekend where you go to Illinois, uh, it's three seventy five for a hotel room, man. Fuck that. Yeah. And all you're doing is sleeping and shitting in it a couple times. No, it's just not worth it. Yeah, and I it's I wouldn't be able to do that. I'll pee in a fucking Walmart parking lot and and I'll wake up or I'll just sleep right there in the fucking field in my truck and just mm-hmm. Shit in the woods. I don't mind shit in the woods. I became a pro at it last year. So that's, let me ask you this. So in Kansas at a Weeha, would you be able to sleep right there? I did. You parked, you kept your park, truck parked at the Weeha and yep. slept? Yep. I don't see why you couldn't. I don't. They don't say you can't park here. Yeah, night. you might have to look deeper into the rules. Like maybe you can't. Yeah. Um, I. It's probably more like maybe you can't set up a camp. Right. But I mean. Which I didn't. If your truck is just parked there and you're yeah. sleeping in your truck, yep. That where that one place we go into, I, there was n- hardly ever a vehicle with the like, Amish. Yeah, where I, where I pooped. It's not like anybody yeah. was driving by. Like this car's been here too long. There was nobody fucking driving by. Man, middle of nowhere. I don't no, know. I think the only thing you'd get is a, a, a somebody who lives right there would ask if you're. Are you? What are you doing, man? Yeah, like what are you there all night for? Well, just, <laughs> you were here like every day in October and November, and now you're here again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't think they give a shit. They I just know. was wondering if that was your kind of one of your goals was to get your truck completely flopped over. All I needed was this external power source and a heated blanket. So the Everything reason I asked you about your soft top was because I always imagine, okay, you put your bed back there mm-hmm. and then you go to Kansas, you drive on those fucking dusty roads. Huh. You remember how much dust got in the yeah. back there? But when we, when we went, when I went the first time with Lauren's truck is the same thing. Oh, you got to really, yeah, you got to get the. Good gaskets, bro. I think you got to really probably have some good seals in there. Yeah, better gaskets. But anyway, I can't lay down in the back of the my truck anyway because it's a short bed. That's what I was wondering. I'm like, I'd have to I do it on an angle. Of my truck. I wondered if I put that. Yeah, I don't climb in it and pull the fucking back up. It'd be close. I'm shorter than yeah. you are, but interesting. Yeah, it's worth checking. But like out. I said, 
this year, that is not can't be a goal priority for me no, because I'm no, not no. at a point where I'm going to be traveling. And if you and I are going to Illinois, we'll split the cost of a hotel room and it won't feel as bad. But right. when it's just me, I can hardly justify doing that. Right. Like, I don't care. I'll sleep in my truck. Right. But if it's me and Adam for a long weekend, then we'll go. We'll stay in the, at the hotel. And yeah. We'll have fun. But anyway, you know. We gotta wrap this up because your family's probably. My furious. wife said, "Don't be long winded." So we're at an hour. So oh yeah, I that'll be long winded enough. I just wanted to make sure that Adam was here and let everybody know what he's up to. I'm alive. We'll have you back on again soon. Yeah, well, I'll have some more. Uh, I'll start. I mean, I'm I already started thinking about like I, every morning I have my coffee and I do my uh, like reading and stuff. Mm-hmm. I do under my my euro mounts mm-hmm. and I've started looking at them and going, "Okay, what are my th- what's going on here?" Am I hitting any, what are, I've got to start getting some of my goals Mm -hmm. going. Like, yeah, write out some actual goals and let's figure out a time on like the smart sheet that Matt shared with you. Let's talk about mm -hmm. how to, how you're going to achieve those. I'd like you to pick a couple of topics that you and I can dig deep into. Mm -hmm. Totally your discretion. Like you pick them and then bring them to me and we'll talk about it. Well, I'm going to tell you something that frustrated me that I watched the other day. I don't care what anybody thinks. It it frustrates me. It's, It's not hunting. It was, uh, it was like, so you and I go in the woods, right? I was telling Kelly this because we went for a walk right after I watched this little reel. Two dudes, climbers, no harnesses or anything, which is your choice. Um, and they must have set up in trees 20 yards apart. And the one dude's filming the other one. They've got a pile of corn directly below them. Two doe eating it. And he's just standing up there, gets his bow, aims right below him, shoots one. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? You call that hunting? That's not fucking hunting. That's baiting. That is not. It's not hunting. I I agree. They're like looking at each other. They just shoot. I'm like, I've told you. I think I've told you this before. If I'm watching a YouTube video and I see a bait pile, I won't watch the video. No, I'm not. In, here's I, but here's the thing. I understand that if your state allows baiting and you don't keep up with the Joneses, you aren't going to see the deer. But I don't want to watch you shoot a big buck that comes into a corn pile. I don't want to watch that. No, I no. want to watch the guy that goes out and reads the sign and learns how to hunt terrain and wind and natural deer woodsmanship shoot a deer. I don't want to watch I just, a corn you pile. You lose uh, points with me as a human being when I see you do. Like, I, you, to me, you're a joke. And I said it. I don't I care. I understand that. I looked at these people and I said, you're a joke. Yeah. You're literally dumping food directly below your stand, and you're what? What? That's not hunting. I you're don't take it that far to where I call. I think that they're a joke. I I just way. don't find that's it. What I, I don't find heart. entertainment yeah. or value in it because I because it's a joke. <laughs> because I'm just it's, saying it's not hard. No, it's not hard. Stay at home. But I also Put understand corn in your it. backyard and just shoot out of your window with a fucking gun with that you can shoot five hundred yards with. I understand why people do and then it. Then go wipe your pussy. <laughs> and I, I just I I've also heard people say that I bait but don't hunt over it. And they so bait for uh, inventory, right? Well, no, they just hunt like to catch them on the way to the bait which is just a little bit it's less a, it's better it's better because you have to read i will call you a joke yeah. if that's the situation i just yeah i and i've said it before i don't want to watch a video those toots could have cl- climbed out of that tree and shot those deer they i won't shoot a, a deer in my backyard no i have deer in my backyard almost every day and everyone's like if you can't shoot a deer in the woods like just shoot one of these if you want to put meat in the freezer i can't do it but you also don't need to because that you doesn't are entertain capable. Me. You've educated yourself and you've put the time into where you can yeah. go shoot a deer actually hunting. I'm it. not killing to kill. That's not why I'm Correct. doing it. I'm hunting a mature, the mat- the most mature animal I can hunt to challenge myself mentally and spiritually and physically. And also the most value, the most return on my investment, the most meat. Mm hmm. Like you said, anybody could go out and shoot a doe over a, a corn pile. Mm-hmm. It's just the way it goes. I don't find why were, joy in that. Why, why did they even have camo on? <laughs> That's a good you know, question. I, I you go out there. I get, Fuck it. Just go out yeah. there and shoot the fucking animal. It's a very hot topic. That's all you're doing. It's it just a, your joke. Sorry. Said it. I'm not sorry. You don't have to be sorry. 
That's Anyways, your opinion. That bothered me. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you shared that with us. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll do this again soon. Yeah, I got to Thanks poop. for coming back on. I know you got to go home. Thanks, okay. everybody, for listening and all your downloads and all your patience and all your love and support. We will talk to you soon. X's and O's. Take them toes. Hold on. Let me get this out, out of my butt. Oh, good Lord, eh? Mmm. Lord, eh? Sagittarius. So just out of curiosity, are those your Benoit balls? Yeah, they are. Really? Those were given to me by my boss. He gave you those? The whole so development team got those. And they're metal because they're easier to clean the shit off of. A Benoit, no, Benoit, are Benoit balls for your vagina or your butt? Oh, I don't know. You put them in there and you kind of move them around and they tighten up your muscles? Bro, why did... You've never farted down here before where I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? That? And that was the first time you farted down here and I was like... I think I have it. to poop. But it's... Well, I mean, I will later. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I didn't think it was gonna smell. You, you also said normally they don't. Uh, that one does. It's hit or miss. It depends on what I eat. And I think <laughs> that I was a hit. It had to have been something I just consumed. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like happens to Betsy. Cool. It smells like coleslaw. Exactly, cabbage. Cabbage. Oh, the answer question. Son answer. of a bitch. Every time I eat cabbage, I this get it. Never happens down here. Sorry. I podcasted with Adam for like ten years. A whole bunch of times in this exact scenario where we are at right now in my basement, and that has never happened until Keep right in mind, now. I'm starting with brand new gut right now, so we don't know oh, what's going to happen. I think you should get the old one back. The old one was just getting fixed, and then I raped it again. Oh, Completely God. raped it. Whew. So, but no, ultimately what I was looking at was uh, Frederick. That's McMurray. Oh, yeah, he's got that little loop-de-loop. Mm-hmm. McMurray, and I just, it made me want to... Kill a buck. Yeah. Even though I can't right now. No, you can make plans. Yeah. It's good to have Yeah, plans. I got to get... Um, I haven't thought about hunting in a while, so it's been... Uh, and I started shooting in the basement, and now all of a sudden the weather's nice, so I can move everything back outside mm-hmm. if you like. But uh, I did shoot um, the Sever Broadhead. I don't know the exact... Was that the 2, 2.0 or 1.75? I think it's 2.0. It's a 2.0. Um, and I liked it. I mean, right off the bat, I just liked that I was able to easily tighten the thing, put it on, move the rubber band up and shoot it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I shot it one day and then I, and then shit hit the fan and I haven't. Right. So I haven't done, um, anything that's on my checklist, but we'll get into it. I got got time time for that. Yeah. 